point tenants have right of survivorship. Mm -hmm. So yes, you can think of it, but understand that investors can buy joint tenants if they want to. It's usually more work to buy tenants in common because each one of us would have to have our own title work. They'd have to create that. Whereas if we were joint tenants, it would just say Raymond, Darren, and Chana as joint tenants. So and if with all that, three, oh, go ahead. Sorry, if all on. three pass away, okay, so joint tenants, they all pass away. Does it then go to um, a family member or does it go to the state? Or how does that work? Do they all three pass away at the same time? <laughs> Well, okay, so, well, no. Uh, well, okay, so look, so let's say Lashana passes away, then it goes to Raymond and Darren. Raymond passed away, now it's all of Darren's. All right. Once Darren wins the game, mm -hmm. it's now his. Mm -hmm. So he would now own it in several feet. Okay, that's okay. So if Shauna dies, her third goes to Darren and I, we own 50-50. Uh-huh. I die, Darren now owns it all. He now owns it in severalty, one owner. And now he gets to do with it like real property. Like, I mean, okay. I shouldn't use that word, like regular property. He can now sell it. He can will it to his grandkids. He can do whatever he wants because he won the game, so to speak. Okay, that makes sense, okay. Yeah. So then my next that question is, is every episode of Matlock that you ever see where they kill their brothers and their sisters to get to the property. That's what we're that's what happens. We knock off Darren. So Shauna and I now own it 50 50. And then I buy Shauna a poison donut. And guess who wins? Yeah. So with joint being in joint tenancy, though, we're still able to sell ours like regular property not under joint tenancy so then under joint tenancy therefore we'll have to go in and like go and seek legal calls of possession right right and there is that legal term we haven't got to yet because i didn't want to confuse everybody i want to make sure we're here oh i know what it is so, <laughs> under joint tenancy no you can't sell yours you can't give it away. You can't put it in your will. You know, Shauna dies and they come to Darren and I and go, woo, I'm an owner. No, you're not. Her half goes to us by rule. All right. Now, have we all got that? Give me a thumbs up. Because what Shauna just mentioned is there is a legal process mm -hmm. called partitioning yep. that can happen. Let's say Raymond, Darren, and Shauna all of a sudden get in a big argument and Darren wants to leave. He can go through a legal process where they literally carve out his section of ownership. Now, uh, do, do, do. so Raymond, Darren, and Lashana. Darren can go through a legal, very hard process and carve out his section called partition. Under the partition, he can now sell it, but the second he does, what happens to E? Because he no longer, E no longer now got his at the same time. He becomes tenant in common. He is now out of the joint tenant. He may still have the same interest only by default. He owns a third, I own a third, Sean owns a third. Well, that's only for the moment, but he got it at a different time. So he's kind of out of the joint tenants. Shauna and I, oops. 
Shota and I still celebrate joint tennis. So she eats the poison donut that I gave her. I now own 66%, right? Actually, 66.66. And this guy owns 33.33. But now we are, and I already heard it correctly, now E and R are now, by definition, tenants in common because we have disproportional shares. We got it at different times because E came in after Darren left. So... That is the definition of tenants in common. So after that court process, yes, Raymond and Shauna still are joint tenants, but together we are a tenant in common with the new guy. I have honestly never seen this happen. Because usually what the judge does is tell Darren, before I go through all of this, check with your other two to buy you out in the real world. Because if I have to do this, it could be very problematic. So it is the interest that we are sharing, 66 to 33, not the physical property, meaning I can't divide it. It's still undividable. Thumbs up. Any qu more questions on this? They love this on the exam, and I have heard that there are several questions that deal with tenants in common and joint tenants. So make sure you guys understand these two. There is a very special joint tenants for married people called tenants by entirety. By the entirety. All right. Entirety, I think. I don't know. Something like that. This says that married people own the property together. When one dies, the other spouse gets it automatically because of a joint tenancy that they share. Now, some states for married couples are separate property and some are community property, all right? Separate property means this. Anything I bring to the marriage, I get after the marriage. If I bring a car and we get married, then we get divorced, I take the car with me. Anything I got through an inheritance, even if we're married, or any money that I got from an inheritance. That is separate property. And the joke I tell everybody, if you know if Indiana is a separate or community property state, you probably do if you've been divorced, because that's when you find out, all right? Indiana is a separate state. When I got married to my second wife, I owned the house free and clear. When we got divorced, she's gone. I keep the house. It was mine to begin with. It's mine after. Now, community property, like California is one of them, and there's a list in your book, Wisconsin, things like those states. The second you're married, 
all of the property is split 50-50. There is a whole routine. All of your faces look too young to remember this. Yeah. But there is a whole separate comedy routine by Eddie Murphy where he talks about the girl, his girl that he's going to marry is from Africa and she finds out that he can get half. Look it up. You'll get the joke now. I get half? Yes. The second they marry you, she gets half or he gets half if they're a community property state. Even if you owned it free and clear, your spouse would get half. So that's community and property, community and separate states. Anything you bring to the marriage, anything you get inherited or any money during inheritance is separate property, even if you get divorced. All right. So that's the section. Wow. Yeah. Wow. We want prenup. Can't write a can't write a pre, uh, contract that supersedes state law, dude. Good luck. No, no marriage. Severity, sole ownership, life estates. Let's talk a second about life estates. This is confusing. Remember in that fee simple where we transfer all five of those rights. So just to refresh my memory. There are five rights. All right. So let's randomly go. Nicole, give me one of the five rights that come with property. I'm sorry, what was the question? There are five rights called the bundle of rights that come oh. with real property. Yeah, quiet and joy. Oh, sorry. I'm unmuted. On Nicole first. Give me one of the five. Control. Control. Aaron, give me one of them. Um, exclusion. You can... Exclusion. Sam, give me one. Enjoy. Quiet enjoyment or enjoyment. That's the right to be left alone. Nelly, getting tougher. Oh, wait, you have to come back to me because I was going to say enjoy. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. All right. What is it? Uh, I believe one of the disposition. Disposition. And Nelly was going to say possession. Yeah. That's what she was yep. going to say. That's what I was going to say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> A couple of rights. Remember, those are the definition of what? Real property. Real property. And when we transfer those rights, we transfer them in fee simple. Mm -hmm. We also, let's do that whole section. We probably need that as well. So when we transfer all five rights, There are two ways to transfer it or convey it. And they are based upon typically the separation is the difference of time. Mm -hmm. There are two estates. Mm -hmm. What is the estate called that has an undefined amount of time? Fee simple estate. Fee simple deals with the degree of these. The freehold. Freehold. Oh, estate. yeah. Yeah, that's the highest interest you can have. In property. And the other one is called less. Less than. Yeah. Called leasehold, hence the term lease. The only thing that separates these two is this word. If we know how long we're transferring it, it's a lease, right? Mm -hmm. You know how long a lease is. Starts and ends. If we don't know how long, it's a freehold. So when I sell my real estate to a buyer, do I know how long he's going to hold the property? No. Oh. So I transfer a freehold estate because it means 
The word the book uses undetermined, undefined is an undefined amount of time or an undetermined. That buyer may own it one day, they may own it a hundred years. Whereas a leasehold is a defined amount of time. So watch out for questions that deal with that. The only two things that separate these is the difference in the time. One is undefined, a day, a month, a year, five years. One is defined. We know a lease may be a three-year lease, maybe a 30-day lease, maybe a one-day lease like a hotel room. So when I transfer that freehold estate, I am going to transfer all five rights. If I transfer all five rights, it is called be simple. Be simple, be simple means I'm transferring all five of those rights to someone that is conveying it. And if I transfer them in their highest form, what's the highest form you can have? Absolute. Absolute. You are absolutely correct. Now, I could also transfer less than the highest form. And that is a uh, defeasance. Mm -hmm. Defeasance is a fancy legal word that means with a condition. With a condition, exactly. I am going to convey the property to you, but I'm going to put some condition on it. And there are two of them. Condition subsequent mm -hmm. and determinable. And all you guys need to know for this course the only thing that separates these two is how you get the property back. All right. One of them requires the judge to tell the buyer, give the property back. The other one comes back automatically without it. All right. So fee simple, all five rights, either in absolute or some condition. Cool? Mm -hmm. All right, there's everybody. That was... Now, I could also not transfer all five rights. I'm only going to transfer four of them. All right, I'm not going to transfer the right of disposition. I am not giving you that right. This is called a life estate. A life estate says I'm going to transfer the other four, one, two, three, and four. I'm going to give you control. I'm going to give you possession. I'm going to give you quiet enjoyment. And I'm going to give you whatever that fourth one is. What would it go? The exclusion. I am not giving you this one. I am going to determine it. So these four, you are going to get for the entirety of your life. Hey, let's have a party. I want you off my property. I'm going to live here. That's cool. When this person dies, the property will go somewhere else. The key questions on this, I keep pointing over here because you guys are on my side of my screen. I should point here. The key question is, what triggers all of this? It's the death of this person. And when he dies, if it goes back to the original person, it is called a what? Revisionary. 
reversionary interest. Revert means to go well, back to. Well, revert. Reversionary. Okay. Called reversionary. Yeah, whatever. I can't. I'm a numbers guy. If it goes to anybody else, all right. The key here is anybody. It doesn't matter. This guy's younger brother, it could go to a college as a donation. I could give it to the church. I could uh, sell it. That person has the remaining interest in it. So the term is called a remainderman. That's the easy way to remember it. This guy comes back to him, it's revert. If it goes here, he gets the remaining portion. He's a remainderman. Now, this is called an ordinary life estate because it deals with this person. There is a second form of this. So he gets the property, he dies. There is a second form of this. Where they still get the property but it's the death of someone else. This is called pure autre vie, which is French for by the life of another. Now, I want you to notice this guy still owns the property. But it's not his death now that causes the transfer. It's the death of someone else. The best example I can give you, which makes it entirely clear, is if this child, this is a child that for some reason is physically or mentally incapable of caring for themselves, the, they could give the property to his caretaker, but when the boy dies, then the caretaker loses the property. Even though the caretaker is still alive, it's not his death, it's pure autre vie. It's by the life of another. And that other, you could name anybody. Say you want to give it to your son and his girlfriend. You don't really like the girlfriend. So when the boy dies, the house goes away. Girlfriend gets left out in the cold. In this pure author V, still have the same reversionary and remainderman concept. The only difference is the person that died that triggered it. In an ordinary life estate, it's the person who got it dies. In a pure autre vie, it's someone else dies. Thumbs up. All right. So now, where are we at? Life estates, trusts, and yeah, we didn't talk about that. The third way to own property is in the form of a trust. A trust is a legal entity. It is a document. And a person could deed property 
into the trust. And you hear this called deed of trust. The person who runs the trust is who? The less the, the trustee. Trustee, yeah. yeah. EE means the one doing the action. So the person who wrote the trust is the trustor. This trust can own property. And the reason you have it is so that it avoids probate right here. What that probate means is you guys can't sue Raymond to get to my property because it's not really my property. I, if this were me, I don't own the house. The trust owns the house. So you come looking to me for money. I'm like, sorry, I don't own it. Well, what about that house over there? That's not me. That's the trust. All right. Yes, no, who cares? Thumbs up. Uh, part two. So that first part we just went through was the broker property and they deals with 10% of the problem. Here's the second section on your outline. It's called land use control, and it's only 5%. So think about this. This is probably three questions. So I don't know how much we want to get into this, but we can talk about this, uh, the government's right. So let's go back over here and clear this out. And when we talked about fee simple absolute, remember we talked about the property, but I want to cover one other thing. Here's the water. And remember there's this little portion of there called the governmental powers. And there are four governmental powers. What do they spell out? What word do they spell? P. P. The first one is police powers. Think of the police powers as the right to control your property for the safety of others. Zoning is a police power. Building codes are police powers. Environmental rules are police powers. They are in place to protect you guys from what Raymond wants to do. Think about this, say, hey, it's my land. I wanna build uh, a building that's 23 stories and I wanna build it out of paper and mache because it's my property, right? No, that's not safe for you guys to come on my property. So the government tells me, okay, you wanna build a building, we'll let you do that, but you've gotta follow these building codes that say, oh, it's gotta be a metal frame. It's gotta have fire extinguishers. It's gotta have emergency exits. All of these things to make it safe, not because they wanna control me, because they don't want me to do something stupid to you guys. That's the police power. The next one is eminent domain. The government has the right to take your property for the betterment of the public. We're going to take your land and build an interstate. That is what is going on through I-69 right now. That is eminent domain. They have the right to tax you. The tax is to pay for the new highway, 
the um, uh, emergency 